Hi, my name is Mohammad Narek, and in this lecture, we will generate the maze using disjoint sets. You must have played this puzzle in your school days or in college time, and it's a very simple uh, puzzle game. So, what we will do in this lecture is we will generate maze using the disjoint set. There are different applications of disjoint sets like cross skills, minimum spanning tree, grid percolation network connectivity, least common ancestor, image processing and maze generation. So the critical minimum spanning tree is a topic of graph and data structure. So we will cover this in that in that lecture. In this lecture, I am focusing on generation of maze puzzle. Now what is maze puzzle? Let's have a quick look. So this is a maze. Uh, you must have played this in, in your school days. We have an entry point and we have an exit point and the task is to find the path from entry point to the exit point this is the puzzle so we can generate this puzzle using disjoint sets and how disjoint sets can be helpful and how we can do this in this lecture i will discuss the algorithm step by step and i will show you with the drawings and with the necessary objects that how this puzzle can be created. So as you can see here, we have eleven. We have eleven steps of this algorithm. This is the algorithm, right? And we have a matrix. I have already uh, created a matrix for you. And this matrix is using this matrix, we will generate the maze puzzle. I will execute these lines one by one, and I will show you how this. The, these uh, this algorithm will affect this puzzle what changes will be what changes this algorithm will make on this puzzle and here i have the values of a disjoint set so the so these values are the same as this grid so this is actually every element is a disjoint set so likewise here every element of this puzzle is a disjoint set and then we will and now we will apply union and find operation to create this puzzle so let's start from let's start with the first line i will execute the this puzzle line by line so the first line says first enter the number of rows and columns and initialize a grid of row multiplied by column so i have already created this for you so it's a two dimensional array so on the first line is actually saying that let's initialize a two dimensional array of row by column so we have four by five column, uh, four by five grid here, and we I have also uh, initialized the values for you. So the next is now the next line. Next line says each grid, each cell of the grid is represented as a separate disjoint set. So now each cell, this zero, one, two, each cell is a separate disjoint set. The third line is randomly. Choose one of the cells and mark it as current cell and mark the number of visited cells as one. So now we'll have to make or you can say we'll have to choose a cell and we will mark that as the current cell and we will mark the number of visited cells. So we have a variable with the name of visited cells. Okay. Because we have a variable number of visited cells. Let's initialize a variable here, visited cell. Okay, we see, and we will mark this as one. Why we are marking as one? Because we are choosing first cell. Or we 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 are we are free to choose any cell from this grid. So I will choose the first cell, right? So this is our cell. Let's let me highlight this. So we I have chosen this cell. I will start with this cell. Now the fourth line says inside a loop find the number of cells adjacent to the current cell and store them in an array now now the loop starts from this point from line uh, number line number four now what it says is find the number of cells adjacent to the current cell so the adjacent cells are one and five right for this cell cell number zero the adjacent cells are one and five so it says that store them in an array so let's create an array here let me create a simple array 
so this is an array of four values because maximum the adjacent adjacent cells will be four for example if 12 is the current cell then the adjacent cells will be 7 13 17 and 11 right because these are adjacent to the cell number 12 the maximum number of cells I can have is 4. So that's why I have created an array of size 4. So now I will store 1 and 5 in this uh, array. So let me say 1 and 5. Okay. Now the next point is the next number, the next point says also initialize a stack and mark its top as empty. So let's initialize a stack here. Let's initialize a stack. So this is this is a stack we have. Let's denote this with S. Okay. So this is a stack, and we don't have anything here on, in this stack. It's an empty stack, right? So we have initialized an empty stack. Now the line number six says, check if the adjacent cell exists, then randomly choose one of them. So yes, we have two adjacent cells and then randomly choose one of them so let's choose one okay let me choose one now the next line says line number seven check whether the current cell and the chosen cell lie in the same set or not so they don't have uh, they don't lie in the same set because all of the elements of the, this matrix they are disjoint sets so there is no uh, they both are disjoint right now the num line number 8 says, if they are disjoint, then union the two cells or knock the wall between them. So we will apply the union function and we will remove this wall which is between 0 and 1. So how can we remove that? So let's remove this wall. Let's remove this wall and so this is a new wall, right? It's not very perfect but uh, it will serve the purpose. So we have joined or we have union these two values, right? So what I can say or what I can do, I can I can join them here also, right? One comma two, right? So I have joined or I can also uh, create a new set. Uh, I think new set will be will be better. So as you can see, I have a new set in which I have union zero and one. And also in the grid, they both are now uh, in the same set, right? And we can choose zero as the representative, right? We can choose zero as the representative of this set. So now we let's go, let's move to line number nine. Now push the current cell in the stack and mark the chosen adjacent cell as the current. So it says now push the current cell into the stack. So let's push the current cell into the stack. The current cell is zero and mark the adjacent cell this was the adjacent cell as the current so we will remove this highlighter from here and highlight this one okay so now this is the current cell so now this is the current cell now let's move uh, to the line number 10 it says also increment the number of visited cells so here we have the variable visited cell and we will increment this one so this will be two now we have a uh, visited cell is incremented by one it's two now let's move to line number 11 otherwise if the number of cell number of adjacent cells does not exist then pop the topmost cell from the stack and continue with the loop checking for its adjacent cell so now we don't have this condition true right now because we have adjacent cells now let's move to loop again because now we are inside the loop and the next uh, iteration and the next step will be from the line number four now it says find the number of cells adjacent to the current cell and store them in the array now the adjacent cells are of the current cell so one is the current cell and adjacent cells are two and six now we will store two and six in the array now we will store two and now, now let's move to the point number five and it says initialize the stack and mark it empty so we have also initialized just we need only to mark this as empty so we will remove zero from here so we have removed zero now let's move to line number six 
check if the adjacent cell exists then randomly choose one of them now let's choose one of them and i will choose six okay i will choose six now i have chosen them no choosing one of the cell now the line number seven says check whether the current cell and the chosen adjacent cell lie in the same set now they both are disjoint right they don't lie in the same set because six is the is Six is itself a disjoint set and one is a part of the set whose representative is zero. So now let's move to line number eight. If they are disjoint, then union the two cells or knock the wall between them. So now we will have to perform the union operation and I will knock this wall. I will remove this line. So I have removed this line and now I will make the necessary lines which are required this is the first line and this is the second line right so now we have union these two cells and accordingly i will make change in this set so i will now say 0 1 and 6 right now let's move to point number 9 now push the current cell into the stack and mark the chosen adjacent cell as the current cell. So now let's move the current cell. So the current cell is 1 and let's move this to the stack and here we can, here we have 1. And we will mark the adjacent cell, this was the adjacent cell as the current cell. So I will, I will now mark as the current cell so now let me highlight so now six has been highlighted now let's move to point number 10 also increment the number of visited cells so now the number of visited cell will be incremented by one and the result will be three so let's write three here okay so the last line is not re relative for us uh, it's not true because we have adjacent cells so let's move again to point number four right now we are inside the loop and uh, number of adjacent cells to the current cell and store them in the array now the number of adjacent cells are 7 and 10 and let store sorry we have three uh, right now we have three adjacent cells 5 7 and 10 right we have three adjacent cells 5 7 and 11 5 7 and 11 so now what which cell uh, i want so we we will first remove these cells into the array so now let's uh, let me move these cells into the array so i have five right i have seven and i have i have eleven okay so these three are the adjacent cells now let's move to point number five initialize the stack so we have initialized the stack and just uh, let me remove the one from here okay so the stack is being initialized every time what we can do we can improve this and we can take this out of this loop and we can only make it empty on this line right so we can do that anyway so it's a uh, so you you it's a point that we have learned you use uh, you using these this algorithm now the next uh, point says check if the adjacent cell exists then randomly choose one of them now let's randomly choose one of one of them and let me choose let me choose seven this time okay let me choose seven this time point number seven says check whether the current cell and the chosen adjacent cell lie in the same set no this is very obvious they don't lie in the same set point number eight if they are disjoint yes they are disjoint then union the cells union the two cells or knock the wall uh, knock the wall between them so i will knock the wall between them and I will remove this line from here. Okay. I will remove this line and now I will create some necessary lines. This is one line, this is the second line. Okay. And now we have union six and seven. So with that, let me add this here also six and seven. Right. Let me give some spaces. Okay. Now, now then, nine uh, line number nine. Now push the current cell into the stack and mark the 
current adjacent cell as the current cell. So let let's push seven in the stack. Let's push seven in the stack and mark seven this cell as the current cell. So let's remove this highlighter from here and now let's highlight seven. Okay, let me highlight seven. So this is the current cell. Okay, and now also increment the number of visited cells. Let me increment the number of visited cells from three to four. Now the number is four. Now we will move back to line number four. I think you have gotten the idea that how we can generate this maze. So th this these four steps that I've shown with this with this uh, with these steps you have now gotten how this algorithm is actually working. So I can go on, but this video will become very long and uh, you will get bored. My main focus and my purpose of this video was to give you the working of this algorithm and how we can create the maze. I hope this will be helpful for you and uh, I will see you in next lecture. Thank you.